Like many of you, I've seen the build videos, read the lifestyle blogs, and browsed far too many used car sites for sprinter vans getting sucked down the rabbit hole of van life. That's why I was thrilled when I connected with Jared of Dream Drive to take one of their custom camper vans out for a few days here in Japan. We had a great three days planned around our prefecture here in the mountains of Gunma, but as you will soon see, the weather had other ideas for us. What do you think, Mish? Go for a bike ride? Uh, heck no. Luckily, Van Life came to the rescue, and with a little extra driving, we found a whole new adventure. First up was to pick up the van in Tokyo, a short bike ride to our nearby station, and I was off to the big city. I met up with Jared, and he showed me all the ins and outs of our new rolling apartment for the next few days. Then, back home to load up. Wow. It's huge. We are used to bikepacking and camping trips, so we may have gone a little overboard on packing for these three days with all the extra space and not having to worry too much about weight. It was getting late in the day, so we decided to head up to Lake Umeda, just outside of Kiryu, to set up for the night. Umeda is a beautiful dam lake about 10 kilometers from Kiryu city center, and at about 300 meters above sea, it is known by the locals for its crystal clear spring water that feeds the lake and the cool temperatures during the hot summer months. One of our favorite local soba shops is located on the lake, so we decided to head over for dinner before setting up camp by the lakeside for the night. Good morning, Umeda. The next morning, we woke up to, well, a downpour. Wow! The rain can come often in waves in the summertime in Japan, so we stuck with our plan to head up to Mount Akagi, the local volcano, for our planned hike and camp spot by the Caldera Lake. Mount Akagi, a stratovolcano, is thought to have erupted over 30,000 years ago, creating the now rigid caldera with two lakes, Oonuma and Konuma, within. With the base of the mountain in the Kanto Plains at around 100 meters above sea level, and the highest peak called Kurobi at over 1,800 meters, or about 6,000 feet, there is hardly a spot in the Kanto region that Akagi can't be seen on a clear day. But today was far from that, so we ditched our plans for the hike up to the Kurobi Peak and decided to stop at Mount Akagi Miyazawa Shrine on the way to offer a prayer for safe driving to the top. Hopefully just once for this trip. I will say, this heavy of rain though, we were getting rained on in a tent, oh my god. From there, we decided to take a much gentler walk along the elevated wooden paths of the Kakumanbuchi Marsh between the two lakes. This is a great hike, rain or shine, as on a clear day, you can get great views of the caldera reflecting into the marshes, and on a supier day like today, you get the misty, mythical side of Japan that can be equally as beautiful. There are some nice teishoku and soba restaurants by the lakeside, and after the walk, we got some warm food and relished in the fact that we had a warm, dry bed to take an afternoon nap and enjoy the rain by the lakeside in. Though we had originally planned to camp at the free campsite by the lake, like our friend here, we had brought our bikes with the hopes of getting a decent ride in for the next two days, and the forecast seemed to have taken a turn for the worse. What do you think, Mish? Go for a bike ride? No. Michelle has always wanted to check out this town in Niigata called Echigo Tsumari that is home to an art triennial festival. Though the festival is just every three years, the art is a collection of large installations scattered around the town and rice fields, so you can visit it at any time. So, we packed up shop and began to drive down the backside of Mount Akagi 
to pass through the huge 11 kilometer long tunnel that separates Gunma and Niigata prefectures. And just like that, as is often the case with the huge mountains in Japan, on one side is a torrential rainstorm, and on the other, beautiful clear skies. It was getting late, so as we drove, we looked up some places for dinner and came across this beautiful restaurant in the center of Tokamachi called Ikote. Unfortunately, they were booked for the night, but we decided it looked too good to pass up, so we put in a reservation for the following night. Then off to the center of the art festival, a sleepy town called Matsudai. It was getting late, which for small town Japan is about 8pm. So we went to three different places before we finally found someone still open for dinner. And I gotta say, their feature dish, Gyu Sugi, was really good. Neither of us had tried this before, and it's kind of like a slow cooked crock pot of beef stew chunks, as well as tendon and classic Japanese veggies such as daikon and negi. Finally, with full stomachs, we set off to find a spot to park and hit the hay for some good sleep before our big day biking tomorrow. Back area is the bike drawer. Having parked right outside of the main art fields at the nearby Michino Eki parking lot, we hit the road and took to the fields and nearby hills for a tour of the art by bike. There was a really large variety of exhibits, from silhouettes of workers in the fields to these cool upside down pencils that had the names of different countries around the world on them. We then went to a nearby forest called the Bijin Bayashi, or Beautiful People's Forest, and did some off-roading before heading into some beautiful terraced rice fields in the nearby valley. It's really hard to capture the views you get from these fields, and unfortunately, the wind was quite strong that day, so we couldn't get the drone up too high for the big shots. Our loop brought us back to the van, and after a quick change and loading the bikes, we took off driving to another nearby area famous for a sweeping panorama of rice fields. We drove to the top and hopped out to take in the sights and wander around the rice fields a little by foot. The last site we had planned for the day was to visit the Tunnel of Light, a 700 meter long tunnel at the Kyotsu Gorge with a mirror pond at the end of it. What if this became a nightclub? On the the next photos and videos out there portion. make this look pretty amazing, but I gotta say, it was a bit too touristy for me personally. A sort of grab your Instagram photo kind of place. You would wait in line to get a photo and then just head out. But I digress. Hey, you gotta do at least one touristy thing on a trip, right? From here, it was back to Tokamachi for our dinner reservations at Ikote. But first, a bath was in order. After a morning bike ride, a long day in the van, and plenty of time outdoors, we headed into town to a local onsen day spa called Chitose no Yu. And after a relaxing bath, it was back to Ikote for dinner. We had a great time chatting with the owners of the restaurant and her daughters, who were studying English, and really enjoyed the meal, with lots of local veggies, rice, and of course ice cream from the nearby area. As the sun went down, we bid farewell to the shop owner and took off for the mountains in search of cooler weather to spend the night. The next morning, we finished the loop heading home to unload the van. Then, I drove the van back to Tokyo to return it to Jared. So what did we think of the van life? Are we going to buy a van of our own to move into soon? Not quite. Though videos and lifestyle blogs out there may make van life full-time sound appealing, the reality doesn't quite fit our current lifestyle and goals. That said, the per day rentals that Dream Drive offers are probably an even better solution than a full on van life for us. With easy pickup in Tokyo, fully outfitted with everything you need, these vans are ready to adapt to any trip that you can dream up. To me, where the vans really shined though was the convenience of things. With public baths being so accessible throughout Japan, plenty of free parking and cheap campsites in the countryside, and the comfortable bed waiting for you at the end of a day, there was really a sense of getting an ability to get farther out than you normally would by bike or public transit alone. I'm really glad we took this trip by van, as honestly, if it started raining that hard on us on day two and we were tent camping, I think we would have just stayed in the tent all day. I hope you enjoyed following along on our first van life adventure, and hopefully we'll get to take another one in the future. 
Thanks for watching this video, and if you're interested in taking one of Dream Drive's fans out yourself, check out the links below. Also, if you like this video or want to share your own experiences with van life, let me know in the comments. Thanks, and see you next time.